Mr. President, I'm happy to follow uh, my leader on the Appropriations Committee, Senator Mikulski. She and I know what it was like on 9-11, 2001, in this building. We were looking out the window down the mall and saw black smoke billowing from the Pentagon. We didn't know what had happened, but we were told immediately, evacuate this United States Capitol building. I'd never heard those words before. And we raced out of the building, standing on the lawn outside, unaware, unaware of exactly what was happening. We knew about the tragedy in New York. We didn't know what was next. And we stood there in our bewilderment, thinking, what can we do? Well, what we did was protect ourselves and our nation and come together. And I remember our choral director when we came together, Senator Mikulski of Maryland, led us in singing God Bless America that evening on the steps of the United States Capitol. There was a feeling of bipartisanship brought about by the tragedy of that moment and the belief that we had to rise above party and do something to keep America safe, and we did. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of the role that the Senator from Maryland played in that. One of the aspects of it went way beyond singing. It was rolling up our sleeves and deciding how to make our government work more effectively. And we had two outstanding leaders in that effort, Senator Lieberman of Connecticut, Senator Collins of Maine. The ranking Republican and Democratic chair of that committee came together and crafted a bill to literally create a new department in our government, the Department of Homeland Security, that brought together, I believe, 22 different agencies under one roof so that we could effectively coordinate keeping America safe. We agreed on a bipartisan basis and created that department, and that department has really served us well. The current Secretary, Jay Johnson, is an outstanding individual. They have so many areas of responsibility. Other agencies play an important role, defense, intelligence, transportation, but the Department of Homeland Security is the coordinating department for America's safety against terrorism. That's why it is incredible to me that we have refused to provide the funds that the Department of Homeland Security needs to keep America safe. The Republicans insisted in December in the House of Representatives they would not pass the appropriation bill for one department, the Department of Homeland Security, because they wanted to enter into a debate with the President over immigration policy. Mr. President, there's nothing wrong with the debate over immigration policy. And in fact, the Republicans now in majority control of the House and Senate could have started that debate weeks ago. They didn't. Instead, they attached five riders to the Department of Homeland Security appropriation bill, and they said, we will not allow that department to be properly funded unless the President accepts these five immigration riders. I want to speak to one of those riders because it really tells the story about the feelings of many in, on the Republican side when it comes to immigration. Fourteen years ago, I introduced the DREAM Act. The DREAM Act is very basic. If you were brought to America as an infant, a toddler, a child by your parents, and you were undocumented in America, we believe you still deserve a chance. As a child, you didn't vote on the family decision to come to America, but your life has been changed because of that decision. You've lived in America, many of these young people, undocumented, growing up, going to school, doing everything that every child around them did, knowing finally that you didn't have the necessary legal documentation to stay in this country. Well, I introduced the DREAM Act and said for those kids who should not be held responsible for any wrongdoing by their parents, give them a chance. Give them a chance. If they've led a good life, if they graduate from high school, if they aspire to serve in our military or go on to college, give them a chance to be legal in America. The DREAM Act. We've never enacted it into law, despite 14 years of good effort. But the President stepped in two and a half years ago and said, by executive order, we will not deport the DREAMers. If there is no evidence of criminal wrongdoing, if they have completed high school, if they came here as infants and toddlers and children, we'll give them a chance to stay in America, to work in America, to go to school in America. We estimate two million young people would qualify. 600,000 have gone through the process, paid the filing fee, gone through the process, have the protection of what we call DACA, and now don't have to fear deportation. Who are these young people? 
They, frankly, are some of the most inspiring stories I've met as a member of the Senate. And the House of Representatives Republicans have said they want to deport the Dreamers. That's right. They will not allow the Department of Homeland Security to renew their protection from deportation, and they won't allow any others to apply for DACA protection. That means 600,000 young people currently protected by DACA would be facing deportation. Another million and a half would be facing it as well. Now, that's the answer of the Republican Party when it comes to immigration. Take these children, came here as children, to America, who have shown that they want to be part of our America's future, deport them, get rid of them. From the Republican point of view in the House of Representatives, we have no use for these young people. Well, let me introduce you to one of these young people. This, my, uh, Mr. President, is Ima Saeed. Ima Saeed was brought to the United States from Pakistan when she was three years old. Her parents brought her to this country. She grew up in Chicago like every other typical American kid. Ima says, quote, I have no memories except those of living in the United States. I'm an American in every way, Ima said, except on paper. Ima was an outstanding student. She graduated in the top 10% of her high school class, where she was secretary of the Spanish club, the math team, and a member of the National Society of High School Scholars. Her dream in life, to be a doctor. Here's how she explains it. It completely breaks my heart, Ima said, to see thousands of children die of treatable disease due to inadequate basic health care facilities. And I want to have the skills and the ability to change it. In January 2012, Ima graduated from Rutgers University, magna cum laude, with a major in psychology. She was on the dean's list six times and had a grade point average of 3.75 out of four. She was a research assistant at the Rutgers Department of, Patho of Psychology and an intern with a local cardiologist. Ima took the medical college admission test after graduating magna cum laude from Rutgers, Mr. President, the MCATs. She scored in the 90th percentile. Her score was better than 90% of those who took the test. Shortly after she graduated from Rutgers, she was told that President Obama had an executive order that gave her a chance to stay in America. It was called DACA. She applied for it, and she was accepted. For Ima, it meant that now for the first time, she could honestly think about going to medical school. She's never received any government assistance, incidentally. As an undocumented person in America, she doesn't qualify. So when she goes to college, it's at considerable challenge and hardship beyond those who have the help of the government. She never did. Ima sent me a letter. And she said that, I quote, after about DACA, she said, I, w I went from feeling hopeless and full of uncertainty regarding my future to feeling confident and optimistic that one day I may actually get the opportunity to help my community and people in poverty-stricken areas. And then something amazing happened. Loyola University in Chicago, after the president's executive order on DACA, decided that they would create 10 spots in their medical school for DACA students around America like Ima. She applied. I got to uh, go to Loyola the day that they started classes, the net 10 of them. Ima is an amazing young woman, an extraordinary academic achievement in her life. And she's surrounded by those just like her who are, quote, undocumented, protected by President Obama's executive order. Well, the 10 were accepted to Loyola in a special program in their medical school in one condition. That is, when they finished and became doctors, they had to agree to serve in underserved areas where the poor people live in America and don't have doctors. They gladly agreed to do it. They're not going to medical school to get rich. They're going to medical school for the enrichment of a profession where they can help so many deserving people. And that's where Ima is today, at Loyola Medical School. And I want to thank Loyola University for giving her a chance and giving nine others a chance. And I want to thank them as well 
for giving Ima, Ina the opportunity to serve those in America in cities and rural areas who have no doctors. Mr. President, the House Republicans want to deport this young woman. That's what they've said. We want to deport her. We don't believe she should stay in America. After all that she has accomplished in her life, after all that she promises to bring to our great country, the Republicans have said no. We don't need you, we don't want you, leave. That is what the writer says on the Department of Homeland Security. I come to this floor virtually every day and tell another story like the story of Ima, the story of what she has been through and the promise that she holds out for the future of this country. I cannot understand the mentality of some on the other side of the aisle who are so hateful when it comes to these young, idealistic, amazing young people. Some of the things they've said about these dreamers are really sad. I've had a chance to meet them, and I'm going to continue to work for them. So let's do this. Let's pass a clean Department of Homeland Security bill. What does that mean? Take off the writers. Take off the political extraneous things. Let's pass the bill to fund the department that keeps America safe. And then turn to the majority party, the Republican majority party, and say, now accept your responsibility. If you want to debate immigration, bring it to the floor of the Senate, bring it to the floor of the House. It's within your power to do it. Don't hold the Department of Homeland Security hostage, and please, when you consider about the future of immigration in America, don't forget we are a nation of immigrants. And that immigrant stock has made this the greatest country on earth, if I can say it. Let's continue that tradition. Mr. President, I yield the floor.